Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. This is Module 4, Training a Neural Network, Part 2, Measuring Results of both Classification and Regression. We'll start with classification. In the part that we were just in, we had just trained a classification neural network. It was for the IRIS data set. So let's see how we can evaluate this a couple of different ways. The most, the best way to, to look at this is just the accuracy. This is like a test score. What percent did you get right? 90%, you got 90% of the questions correct. A 90% or a 0.9 accuracy means that it's, it's accurate 90% of the time. So here, that's just the calculation, the number of correct divided by n, where n is the total size. Now we just trained that network, so if we were to print out the predictions that we saw before, they're all just probabilities. So this is the, the probability that this iris that, that was the first one in the, tr the test set, second one, third one, that it was the first iris second iris and third iris. So each row is a prediction, one of the test irises that we passed in, and each of these is the probability that it thinks that is the iris type. We can convert these into numbers. Uh, well, they already are numbers, but into integer numbers that basically zero for the first iris, one for the second, and two for the third. So we'll run that, and here are the predictions. So let's see how this lines up. 1 is the first iris predicted. That means it would be the second one. And that makes sense. 9,4 times uh, 10 to the minus 1 is 0.94. So it's 94% sure that it's iris 1 or the second iris. 0 down here means the first one. So for the second one, we're now thinking that it's, it's that one. So our max now crunches this so that you have all of the actual values. This is very much like the Scantron on a, on a test. You pick A, B, C, D. This is just one, 0, 1, 2. Those are what the, the neural network is predicting. It's the same information as up here. It's just simply that we're automatically figuring out which of these is the biggest. Now we do lose some information by doing this, and we'll see that that's important in a moment. We no longer have which, we only know here that it, that it thought it was the second iris. Position one, zero and one, so the second position. We don't know how sure it was. We've lost that. Up here we had what, how sure it was, but often you don't care. You just want the one that it has the highest probability. This lets us calculate an accuracy score. It was 100% accurate. It's a simple data set. So all of these are correct. This is the validation set. So these are the ones that it did not see. So this, this is a very good trained neural network. Here we see how this is done though. We do Y compare. So Y compare is the Y test. Because Y test is, if we look at what Y test looks like, It's dummy variables. So this is the data that the neural network was training on. That said that you should have zero probability for the first one, zero probability for the last one, but the middle one, which is what it really is, you should have 100% probability. Training data is usually like this. It's fully on, fully off. It's not like you're unsure. You've got labeled data, you know which one. You could train the neural network though on unsure data. You, in your, training data, if you weren't sure, maybe it was 90% this one, 0.1 this one, that is possible. It's rare, but you can set it up that way. So we don't, we can't really calculate accuracy on that, so we do the Y compare, and that simply gets it down to like we have here, so we can compare this to this. One and one is the same, zero, zero is the same, two and two. That's what this is doing. Metrics.accuracy score, it just compares Y compare to your predictions and tells you how accurate you were. The problem with accuracy is it's all or nothing. 
you very much have partial credit with neural networks. If a neural network, if the first class, so maybe this very first class, so it would be iris 2, iris two the second one, maybe the neural network was only 90% sure that, that, that it was that one, and it had the other 10% off on some other, some other iris. That would mean it was only partially correct. It wasn't 100% sure of it. We use log loss to do that. That way we can really measure and penalize the neural network for not being so sure. Because with accuracy, even if it was only 51% sure on a particular um, row, that 51% would probably be the highest of the, of the values. And it would, it would choose that. It would get 100% correct for that one value because it had, if you mark A on your exam and you weren't very sure of it, but A is in fact right, you still get full points for that. We don't want to do that with a neural network. We want to penalize it for not being sure when it was right and being overly confident when it's wrong. We do that with log loss. So here I can print the log loss score. So remember the accuracy was perfect for this neural network. The log loss is not perfect. The log loss is 0 0.07. This is not a percent. This number really does not have a whole lot of meaning other than you want it as low as possible. And it penalizes you greatly, as we'll see, for overconfidence in a wrong answer, and also underconfidence in a correct one. So this is, this is essentially how it's calculated, this formula here. It's actually a lot more simple looking than, than, than that equation there. Here we're taking y hat, which is the prediction, and we're essentially calculating it. Now this is just for a binary classification where you just have two classes. We'll look at how you actually calculate that uh, in, in a moment. First, let's look at this chart though. This is a chart of the logarithm and this is used at least part of this is used for the, for the log loss function that you are calculating on. Everything below zero is used for the, for the calculation, zero y that is, of the of zero y and zero um, and one x is used for the calculation. Above this, this is sort of the order log n sort of logarithmic uh, expansion that, that computer scientists talk about when they evaluate algorithms. So what this does is whatever, so if the, if the correct answer was the first iris and you gave it 100% accuracy, or you gave it 100% probability, so you gave the correct answer 100%, your log loss would be zero. So remember the iris set that we just looked at, the training for, it had a log loss of 0 0.07. A perfect log loss score is zero. So it's, it's not perfect. It wasn't 100% sure on all of those, and this gives you a way to measure it. By the way, 0.07% log loss is actually very good, almost suspiciously good. You, you might be overfit. In the case of the IRIS data set, it's, it's a simple data set, so that's, that's perfectly fine. But what we are doing here is, um, and I can show you too, I have the comments here, the different parts. The part of it that you use for computer science analysis is that. Uh, algorithm uh, size growth. This is more the, the part of it that we're using for error evaluation. 
higher than one is as far as it goes. You're never more than 100% sure that one of the classes is correct. You're not going to put 110%, 1.1, as the probabilities of one of the one of the classes because those all have to sum to one. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Probability sum to one. So if you if it was one. you are going to have a zero log loss on the correct one. So, because log of one is zero. If you gave it a 75%, so you're only 75% sure on the first one, your log loss is going to be somewhere around here. It's going to be lower than one, but higher than zero. And we'll see some other, some other examples of that. But notice, as you get less and less confident, you are only 50% sure of a, of a, uh, of the correct answer. Now you're right at about one. And usually anything below about 0 0.5 log loss, or anything above 0 0.5 log loss is not that good. And by the way, these are all negatives, so that's why this equation up here had a negative in it. We are essentially taking off the um, we're essentially taking off the the negative for this, and just thinking of log losses as positive numbers. But if you are if you give it zero, and you say you're a hundred percent sure that the correct answer is not the correct answer. You're infinite, you have an infinitely bad score. You never want to, you always want one of your output neurons or your classes to have at least a little bit above zero. Otherwise, otherwise you're going to, you're going to hit the asymptote and your equation is really not even valid. It's going to return, uh, it's going to return negative infinity and that's, that's not a valid uh, score. So let's look at how we would evaluate some of these. Oh, let's look at how we would evaluate uh, regression results now. So you will only use log you only use log loss on classification. You only use accuracy on classification. You'll use another technique called root mean square on regression. So like the miles per gallon data set that we're now looking at. This is just a training like we've seen before. We did do the we did do the the 75 split. So 75% of the training data are, are of the data are for training, 25 are for testing. Notice though we have mean square error and validation loss. You always have these two for regression. Softmax and categorical cross entropy, like we saw before, those are the ones for classification. These two are for regression. And now we've got it trained. You can see the validation loss keeps going down further and further and further. Eventually it hits as far as it goes and we hit early stopping. For this we're going to use the mean squared error. So the mean squared error is what's being reported here. All that is is you take all of the expected um, outputs the y's subtracted from the the predicted outputs the y hats square it sum it so that's summing the entire training set and then dividing by it so it's, it's essentially like an average except you're taking the difference and not just summing the difference you're squaring the difference so it's a sum of squares and it's uh, it's the mean of the squared errors the problem with this value, and we can print it here, it becomes the 15.664, very similar to where it stopped. So the validation loss being reported there is in mean square error. The problem with this is you don't really know. That's not 15 miles per gallon. It's in a different set of units than your training set. You usually want it in the same units as your training set. That just makes it easier to evaluate. All you have to do there is take the square root. So that's root mean square, RMSE. So the root mean square error is the square root of the MSE, which is that. 
So this is just taking the square root of what we previously calculated. We will do that here. And now we have 3.95. That is a lot more interpretable of an error. That means that we trained it to be about plus or minus four miles per gallon. So it's, it's not super accurate, but it, it gets reasonably close to that. So this is how you evaluate the classification and regression. This, this is an area that I frequently get questions from students on. So just to review this briefly, you have classification and regression. Classification is when you're picking classes, so like the three different iris types. Regression is when you're predicting a number, like the miles per gallon for a car. Classification, if you have a classification neural network, it is always going to be categorical for your compile and softmax for your final activation. Don't confuse these. If you're, I have seen questions on homework where they'll have categorical cross entropy and linear or nothing for your, your final layer. So you've got kind of a regression classification hybrid going on, which, which you don't want. That's really not useful for anything. And then make sure that you, if you're doing regression, that you have the mean squared error. And here we don't have, it's actually linear, but that's the default. So you don't have an activation function for your output layer. And then make sure you know how to evaluate them. You are using root mean square for regression neural networks. And you're using mean square error when you have, uh, I'm sorry, you're using mean square error also when you're doing regression, but usually you want to take the square root of that and report your final error as, um, uh, as RMSE, root mean square error. And then log loss or accuracy, that's what you use for training a regression, I'm sorry, a classification network. The problem with the log loss is it does not mean a lot to non-AI or data science people. You don't want to talk to a marketing executive and tell them, well, your log loss is, is 0 0.03, and that's really good. They, they're going to deal better in accuracy. So anyway, that is how you evaluate classification and regression networks. The next part is going to be on cross-validation.